When Alex Ferguson brought Aberdeen their first Premier League title in 1980, the club embarked on a decade which has become legend in Scottish and European football. In ten years, Aberdeen were to win the Scottish Cup four times, the League Championship three times and the Skull League Cup twice. Having broken the Glasgow stranglehold on Scottish football, Aberdeen went on to win the European Cup Winners' Cup and beat the European Cup holders to claim the Super Cup. The style with which they won 11 major trophies in 10 years unquestionably made Aberdeen Team of the Decade. I think that Aberdeen were lucky, and, and I was lucky to have players such as Kennedy and Jarvie, McLeish and Miller, uh, who had really good character. People could influence things around about them. But the league, obviously, it was a criteria in which that um, any manager should want to do something about. That was important, winning that league. So it was an achievement and a half, really. Uh, but the platform which Aberdeen really escalated from. Would be heading that forward and it's picked up by McMaster. McMaster through to Harper. Harper's left foot out in front, it's going to be a goal. Yes, it's over, it's a goal. The long ball away down the left. Harper ran for it, he took off before the pass, even was headed that way, put the ball in. McCoy tried to get to it, came off his line. The ball spun loose tantalisingly on the goal line and Steve Archibald forced it over the line to make it Rangers nil, Aberdeen 1. Very dangerous uh, position. Master curling it into the box. The side getting away on his first track and oh, big goal! Brilliant goal by Gordon Strappen. McLean. Three Rangers men in the box. Harlane trying to knock it on. John McDonald equalises for Rangers. Great header from Jackson. Rangers forcing them across the field. Hamilton trying to turn one way, then the other. All the youngsters are lucky, but it's touched in at long last by Steve Archibald. One minute plus injury time remaining. Derek Hamilton! There it is for Aberdeen! Early March, we didn't really fancy our chances. Then we went and beaten and Celtic got a bad result at Dens Park one day and we won at Kilmarnock. But we still had to go to, to Park uh, twice in three weeks, I think. And we had to win there twice to win the league. And to go uh, at Park, to Parkhead in front of 60,000 people twice, I mean, you really grew up, you know, we grew up that month. It was an incredible feeling. It's McGee, McDonald. He's gone round the well. Jarvie's there with a chance. Oh, a great goal by Jarvie. 
This is where Aberdeen have looked a bit vulnerable for a high ball floating and curling in like this. What extra goal! Doyle, the equaliser. Here's Jarvey. What's a great run, Scanlon. Oh, that was almost a clearance by Archibald. And that's a goal, McGee. Strachan takes it. Rugby trying to turn it back. Knocked in by Scanlon. Archibald had a chance and it scores. Archibald scores. Kluski, nice control, doing well. Tumbled down in a penalty. Not done by McLeish, who wants to argue about it. Kluski against Clark. 1 1. Kennedy sensing the offside trap. Strachan. Kennedy's onside, this is danger for Celtic, Kennedy across, what a chance for McGee, and a goal! McGee scores 45 minutes! Conroy losing out to McMaster, oh good control by McMaster, did that beautifully, and a good ball out to Scanlon. McGee, Archibald, striking all in the centre, Scanlon checks, right foot, then left foot, there's a cross, in for Archibald, Latchford drops it, Strachan scores! Strachan makes it 3-1. Disaster for Peter Latchford. That April double at Parkhead took Aberdeen to the threshold of their first Premier title. With a great chance. It comes less. And it's a goal by Watson. Kennedy once again. Curling towards Archie Ball. There's a good touch in. What moves? Sin, yes. Scanlon the scorer. Kennedy. Archie Ball. Now McGee, still on it, great run by McGee, does, yes, been far from a classic, but Aberdeen have done exactly everything right from this, beautifully inside, Watson, oh the bar, Scanlon, yes, what a marvellous goal to finish this match, they have won, Alec Ferguson is on now in the penalty area, there he's in, Aberdeen have definitely won the championship. Can you blame the man for going out of his mind temporarily? In Scottish terms, it, it was uh, something of a phenomenon to be, break that stranglehold on it because it was 1965 when a, a team outside the old firm had won it, and that was Kilmarnock. Aberdeen finished one point clear of Celtic and a new force in Scottish football was born to the delight of the Pitodri fans. In 1982, having swept aside Motherwell, Celtic, Kilmarnock and St Mirren, Aberdeen were to stamp their distinctive style on the Scottish Cup final. Well, all finish. One things again, David Cooper. That's a good pass to Miller. Odiel finding space to the in the box. That's a great alley cross. John McDonald. And that was goal for Rangers. Alec McLeish and in the box, marked by Jackson. Shoot with a kick. Jackson's been charged down and a good tackle by Bet. McLeish! Now that is a magnificent goal for Barry McLeish. Inspired play from the Aberdeen centre half. There's the corner kick from Cleet. Means initially from Jackson was blocked. Bet did a fine job there. Now just look at McLeish. He looks up, picks his spot. Certainly looks up, sees that the goalkeeper is off his line and right footed bends it round the goalkeeper into the top of the net. What a marvellous goal. Ball spinning wide now to Strachan. That's towards McGee, he's round the back. Mark McGee puts that on the front. The Aberdeen fans go wild. Getting beyond Miller, McGee is coming in to attack it with his head. The downward head are leaving. Here's McGee taking on the defence single handed, he's still coming forward. There's Strachan, and that will surely take a cup to the country. Strachan and Bell together. There's Cooper breaking through. A chance now, this will be the fourth ball for Aberdeen. And Cooper puts it in with the Rangers finish. Because when things are going wrong against you, you don't 
get the breaks of the ball. Cooper in with Stewart. He didn't really know where the ball was, but he got the break. And as you say, it's a schoolboy's dream being able to take your time, knowing that really all you've got to do is crack it into the back of the net. Uh, it was a tremendous game, um, and I th we thoroughly deserved it. It went to extra time, uh, as quite a lot of our cup finals uh, tended to, to do. And, uh, you know, to, to beat Rangers 4 1 at Hamden was, uh, it was quite an occasion for us. I think Mark McGee went down the line, Alec Miller injured himself. Um, Mark got down the line, squared the ball to me, passed the goal, and everything. I had the whole of the goals to aim for. I mean, I was only about four yards away from the goals, nobody in goals, nobody near me. But the goals must have just went whoosh. They must have went to about two feet wide when the ball arrived at me, because like, that's how the way I felt, you know. You felt the whole of Hamden's watching you. If you miss this one, you'll always be the member of the guy that's got side foot by the post. And once I went in the back of the net, I went crazy, then somersaults and things like that. The Aberdeen skipper, Willie Miller, with the moment he's been waiting for so long. Holding a couple off for the Aberdeen supporters who've travelled down here in such great numbers. Incidentally, the Man of the Match award was presented in the midst of all that to Alec McLeish. That historic Hamden victory booked Aberdeen's place in next season's European Cup Winners' Cup. A preliminary round 11-1 aggregate win over Sion of Switzerland was followed by defeat of Dynamo Tirana of Albania and Lech Poznan of Poland. That set up a quarter-final tie against the mighty Germans Bayern Munich. Inevitably it's Breitner over the ball. Augen Thaler looking for a chance to shoot. And that's the moment that Aberdeen were dreading. Augen Thaler with a marvellous goal puts Bayern in front. Breaks for Cooper, now McGee, that's a great cross, Eric Black is there, it's off the line, no, it's played in by Simpson, and Aberdeen at level. So Simpson with his ninth goal of the season, gives Aberdeen a lifeline that looked as though Bayern had control. Created on the right, space found to make that cross, a great ball across for McGee. Black did very well beyond the far post and nodded back to the goal line was blocked on the line and Simpson in typical fashion coming through to follow up and score. He's a rear helping his defence. Now Dremler. And it's got a touch. McLeish. And that is a special goal coming in from Flugler which went quite well in Aberdeen's challenge in Europe. Just look at this. The ball is played in. It's touched on by Hannes. McLeish heads it out, and look at that for a volley. Well, they couldn't agree, obviously. Strachan plays it in. The header finds the net. And Aberdeen are back in the match once more. Alec McLeish. Alec McLeish gives Aberdeen a chance. Strachan went back, took the free kick. McLeish stretched those neck muscles, and Muller couldn't keep it out. So Alec McLeish picks up only his second goal of the season, but it gives Aberdeen the urge to force the pace in the last 13 minutes. Can they make it? There's Eric Black. The goalkeeper knocks it out. It's in the net and Aberdeen are in front. John Hewitt. Petodre goes berserk. John Hewitt's been on the field two minutes. And he's scored the goal which might make European history for Aberdeen. The free kick that uh, Alec McLeish scored, but we practised that for uh, weeks beforehand and it came off in a big game. We had the bottle to do it when it, was mat when it mattered, you know, in front of that big crowd. Uh, th John McMaster mus and myself dummied the ball, looked like we'd uh, cocked up the situation, then we played it in quickly and big Alec scored. No sooner was we were over the celebrations when John Hewitt was sticking the ball in the net to make it 3-2 and just that, that one minute was, I mean, if I could relive that again it was a superb feeling and I've never seen an atmosphere like that at Petaudry in my life. And having seen off the Germans, Petaudry was treated to an exhibition in the semi-final. Well that's the kind of skill Aberdeen wanted to introduce to the match, a great chance for Bell. And Black gives Aberdeen the perfect start. Here's Bell again. Well, the Belgians have never seen Bell play before tonight, and they certainly have learned a lot about his close control and running power. Here's Simpson going all the way himself. 
Neil Simpson with four minutes on the clock and Fidelco is beaten again. Ludwig now finding Bell. Kleister's coming across. Mark McGee. Yeah, Jensen now trying to recover. The header into the corner. And Peter Weir makes it for. With not Malik Ferguson's face, but he really ought to be very contented indeed. Assisting in full concentration now as Fordekas comes forward. McLeish being careful not to concede anything. And the ball's in the net. Goodmanson has scored. And that was exactly what the Belgians were looking for. Strachan turning away from his marker. A great chance for Aberdeen. It's off the line. And still it won't go in. It's made it at last. Mark McGee takes the credit. Hewitt put it in. Strachan shrugged off Kleisters. Took it towards the goalkeeper. Tempted him out of his goal. Played it across for McGee. It was blocked brilliantly in the line by Bielush. Blocked again. McGee once more. Miller came forward. And McGee on the ground got the last touch. Really, uh, but Audrey, we destroyed them. Uh, Dougie Bell. Uh, we had the skills that Dougie Bell had at that time. He was used in a specific way, especially in Europe and uh, the European clubs just couldn't handle them and they, we absolutely destroyed them and you know we set up a lead that there's no way we were going to lose and uh, after the, the game here we knew that we were in the final. Uh, the training well you don't do a lot before that kind of game anyway it was just a matter of taking them over uh, and actually and I just made sure that the nerve was good the memories of that game, or the, the build-up to that game, was uh, how relaxed we all were. Um, I think Alec Ferguson at the time, it's the more, most relaxed I've ever saw him. I'm sure it was put on, because uh, Fergie used to get a wee bit uptight at big games. And uh, I'm sure he set out to calm everybody down by being calm himself. Uh, so everything was calm, everybody was confident, we're looking forward to the final. The night before the game, I told them that they would win it. Uh, I couldn't see Real beat them. After I saw Real play in the semi-final against Oshibe, and I phoned Archie and I phoned the chairman, I said, I'm telling you honestly, you can't believe the chance we've got. We have a marvellous chance. I really feel that. Black is waiting at the far post for the cross. Is Eric Black? <laughs> marvellous effort from Black. The danger is not over, but it's behind now. And Eric Black making a major impact on the match right at the start. Strachan now to find his way through the water. The corner. There's McLeish. Deflection. Black. And Aberdeen take the lead. Six and a half minutes into the match. Gordon Strachan's corner kick sets up the chance. Well, Strachan looked a bit leisurely about it when he lined it up. I watched Frank McLeish racing into the picture. Very positive header. It was half blocked by Juan Jose, and there was Eric Black doing what he does so well. Gallego. This one he told with a dummy. Careless one from McLeish. Will it be a penalty kick? Yes. Leighton is penalised. But Santiano was brought down. That's a disastrous moment. For Alec McLeish, there's the pass back, Santillana through quickly, I don't think there's much there at all, that was a penalty kick. Juanito will take it. No chance for Leighton. 15th minute of the match, it's one apiece. For Weir on the left, running at Juan Jose. Coming off Metgott, chance for Strachan. And goalkeeper Augustin saves it for Real. What a great chance it was for Gordon Strachan. It was good play from Weir. This is Peter Weir at his best. Taking on Medgott, needs a good cross. There's Eric Black. Oh, and what a miss from Eric Black. Peter Weir. Delightful little chip forward. San Jose, the covering player for Mark McGee. Hewitt's waiting in the middle. Yeah, that is a magnificent goal for Aberdeen. John Hewitt celebrates. Seven minutes into the second half of extra time. Just eight minutes left. And the Aberdeen supporters go for 
of serves. What a great goal it was. A cross from Mark McGee, beautifully met by Hewitt. Augustine for once had no chance at all. Just look at this jubilation seems among the Aberdeen supporters. And the Aberdeen supporters waiting to greet Willie Miller as he walks forward. Dr. Franchi about to hand over the trophy. Carlos Santillana, the beaten Real Madrid captain, looks on as Willie Miller holds off the European Cup Winners Cup. John was a lucky player, wasn't he? I mean, he could come on, he scored in so many important games that um, he could come on and score his first touch as he did against Bayern. He was capable of doing that. He scored a lot of important goals. You always feel and you always felt it at that time and even in that final, you say, well, he's got the luck to come on and score, you know. So you're always confident we're that kind of substitution with John. Peter Weir came into his own. Peter Weir was a deciding factor. He was absolutely magnificent in the second half. When Peter played, Aberdeen were the top side. The thing I think that made it really special was it was Real Madrid we beat. It wasn't um, a team that nobody's heard of from Romania or any of these kind of countries. It was Real Madrid who are possibly the biggest name in world football. Um, that really made it really special. And you could, you could see how the Aberdeen people reacted to it. It took us something about an hour and a half to two hours to go around the, the town afterwards. And you just could not move. Um, the turnout was unbelievable. To me, anyway, the, the most memorable uh, part for me was all the school kids. Because school was in, and there was some silly rule who said that, you know, they weren't going to day off. You know, which was crazy in Aberdeen. You know, say, just uh, giving everyone a day off. I think we just took it anyway. Um, I think the biggest thrill I had was, was the Cup Winners' Cup coming back with that. And we knew um, we'd achieved something that we dreamed of, but when we came back and we were greeted by the fans, we couldn't believe there were grannies and little kids out. People that had never been to Pataudry, but because Aberdeen had won, they wanted to come out and cheer the heroes. The players were, you know, they were in seventh heaven. For me as a manager too, and the, the, the crazy thing, uh, to me anyway, the disappointment for me is the manager doesn't get a medal. And you would think that with that, that sort of a frailty of a manager's life can be decided, maybe even a final for, well, for Di Stefano it did, he doesn't get a medal. I mean, it's crazy, I think it's, I think it's obscene, you know. The Don still had unfinished business. Having dismissed Hibs, Dundee, Partick Thistle and Celtic from the Scottish Cup, only Rangers could prevent Aberdeen from landing their second major trophy in ten days. Hustled by Simpson. A chance for Black. Brilliantly saved by McCloy. Well, close cross, there's Peter Weir. Weir with the corner. There's Rugby. Will Cooper's made a good run in the right. Good position for Aberdeen. Well saved again by McCloy. This time playing it short for John McDonald. He's away from Luke V. Brilliantly saved by Leighton. McGee driving at the Rangers defence. Still going forward. Good tackle from McPherson. Miller now to Peter Weir. Great chance for Aberdeen. Peter to hit a hand, but the way it appeals for a penalty wave this side. Now Davy Cooper. Russell continuing the run. Well, that's brilliantly taken by Leighton. What an important player he's become for Aberdeen this afternoon. The turn ball from Cooper. Bet committing the Aberdeen defence. Clark going to his right. Bet doing it himself. Well, once again, Leighton is Aberdeen's hero. Here's Russell. He's giving it straight to Simpson this time. A chance for Aberdeen in the break. Is Eric Black, he's got McGee in the right, and a chance for Aberdeen. Still for Eric Black, and Eric Black gets the goal, which will surely win the cup for Aberdeen. Joy for Black, joy for the Aberdeen players, and the supporters must in our right. And no doubt at all about it, a shade of good fortune about this goal. Black set it up with a pass to McGee. Patterson made a good tackle, it was deflected high in the air, black so deadly in the air, and McCloy had no chance. Yeah, it's got a bit of fortune written all over it, Jock, because Aberdeen can think themselves perhaps a bit lucky um, to be at this stage in the game, give themselves the opportunity to win the tie, but in fairness to young black, 
he got on the end of it and he put it away very very well indeed he's that's his 40. it's the first time this century a team outside the old firm has retained the scottish cup john hewitt holds it aloft now neil cooper and there's the man who scored the goal special cheer for eric black and now the cup is paraded to the aberdeen supporters so a glorious season for Aberdeen and the Dons were now determined to recapture Scotland's top prize, the Premier League Championship. We're once again with the end swinger, Willie Miller is there this time and there's no answer. Miller makes it 1-0. In the 8th minute of the match, Willie Miller collects his first goal of the season and gets Aberdeen the perfect start. Well, we did well, stopping the ball for McMaster. And now St Johnston are stretched again. Off the post, the rebound is in and Eric Black makes it two. Well, Stewart with the shot the first time and Black with the rebound. McMaster looking for help in the box, there's Mark McGee. Defence. Alec Ferguson in the dugout looking where they come. It's kept in by Stark and thumbed in by Black. And that's another defensive disaster for St Johnston. Well tackled by Gibson. The ball falls for McLeish. Beautifully controlled by Black. What a fine pass to Stark. Beautifully played forward into space for Stark and the left foot shot beating McDonald. The striking's corner kick. Rugby's there. Off the line by Cowie. And McLeish intelligently hitting the ball wide again for Strachan. There's John Hewitt. And the ball is in the net. And it's Rugby who's made it. After being denied just a moment ago. Weir with a corner kick. First time shot from Simpson. And he's made it this time. Right on the final whistle, Neil Simpson makes the match safe for Aberdeen. Here's Strachan. Bell inside, Simpson in the middle. Carson intercepting, here's Tommy McIntyre. And that'll be the opening goal, Mark McGee pumps it in, and Aberdeen are in front. Gagan playing it forward, Rugby picking it up. Rafi allowing play to go on, and that's the opening model wanted. John Gagan, one minute gone in the second half. Here's Weir's corner kick. Strike is brought down, and the penalty kick is given. Unlucky player was Paul McFadden. Striking against Walker. Perfectly struck. Perhaps the calmest man in the field who has got the strike and he took that penalty. Shot went to striking. Now we are. The layoff from McGee to striking. Brilliant play from Aberdeen. And goals do not come any better than that. Brilliantly set up. Well, it might have come off a defender in the end. With the league campaign off to a great start, Aberdeen faced one final challenge in 1983. Could they beat the European Cup holders Hamburg after tying the away leg of the Super Cup? Counts challenging, there's Neil Simpson. Yes! And Aberdeen have made it. Neil Simpson gives Aberdeen the lead one minute into the second half. Black goes up. There's Willie Miller. Yes! So not quite a trophy, but a plaque which will have pride of place in the Petaudry Trophy Room. Alec Ferguson in the background there, looking on proudly as well he might. His team proving unquestionably that they're the finest team in Europe of 1983.
Indeed they were, and by May, Aberdeen confirmed their position as Scotland's top league side. It shall not William. That's in to McKimmy with a shot, he scored! That goal clinched Ferguson's second league title, his sixth major trophy. Believe you me, this is the prize he wanted more than anything else to get into the European Cup. Perhaps not the same kind of personal jubilation he's shown in the past, but by now Alec Ferguson is perhaps getting a little used to winning trophies and titles and championships. It had been Aberdeen's championship from day one of the title chase, as the seven-point winning margin emphasised. Later that May, Aberdeen were back at Hampden, having defeated Kilmarnock, Clyde, Dundee United and Dundee, en route to the Scottish Cup final. Victory over Celtic would give the Dons a hat-trick of Hampden successes. And it goes to McLeish, headed back in for McGee, and there is Eric Black. He's onside, and that's the opening goal. Sinclair, right up front. Robin on the wing. He's had some success taking on rugby on the inside this afternoon. There's a chance for Melrose. And he flies off the floor the next day. Bell. And he hits the post. Bonner completely beaten. A flighted ball for Black. The shot goes in for Mark McGee and Aberdeen are in front. <laughs> and this is becoming an annual occasion. The third time in a row we've seen these men in red collecting the Scottish Cup. And all bar Stuart McKimmy and Peter Weir of the original 11 are collecting their third medal for winning the Scottish Cup. Gordon Strachan's farewell to the Aberdeen supporters. He's off now to Old Trafford but with another winner's medal. There's a new confidence in us. Um, we went out of the stage not thinking that we could compete with Rangers and Celtic. We actually thought we were better than them. Charlie Nicholas wrote in his book, they always felt that Aberdeen were cocky. Um, but it was, a, it was a, more of a pride in what we had achieved with each other. A pride in our own teammates and we're proud. I was proud to be on Wally Miller's side and Al McLeish's name was proud to probably be with me and we were all happy with each other. And that's how we might have looked cocky, but it was just a, real, a, a real pride in what we were doing. As I'm saying, maybe we looked cocky when we went to Glasgow because we love going to Glasgow. We love winning in Glasgow. Well, I, I remember going there my first, just when I arrived, and we, we scored it. We, we drew 1 1 against I, Rangers at Ibrox. We scored in the last minute from a Dom Sullivan header. And they're all dancing and doing cartwheels in the dressing room. We're getting a point, you know. In a way, that disappointed me that. And they were saying, before they go to play Rangers, you hear some of them saying, take your time at throw-ins. Used to drive me mad, that. But um, all that changed, you know, all that changed when the real belief came into the club and we used to go to Ibrox and couldn't get the ball played quickly enough. Cooper score. Touched on by McPherson. Can we play the shot, the deflection! And Rangers go in front! There's McKimmy. Now Weir, good play from Aberdeen. McKinney still has Weir available short. Decisive header out came from Dave McPherson. Now wide for Simpson. Chance for Stark! A brilliant header from Billy Stark. And Aberdeen are back on level terms. 19 minutes into the first half. Neil Cooper set it up wide for Simpson on the right. Now look at this cross, brilliantly delivered. And there was Billy Stark with a diving header, which left McCloy without a hope. Looking for McKimmy. Here's Willie Miller. Stark plays it through, there's Frank McDougall. And Aberdeen go in front. 15 and a half minutes into the second half, a brilliant goal from Aberdeen. Beautifully engineered. McKimmy playing it into the path of Willie Miller. Now look at the forward pass here. He's got Stark at the edge of the box. Miller charging forward. The delicate ball through the range of defence. And that's when McDougall's at his very best. Simpson picking up the loose ball again. Releasing Weir on the left. Patterson has gone across. 
We has got the cross in and Dave McPherson got it away. But it goes again and Frank McDougall with a header and Aberdeen are ahead. 11 minutes gone in the first half and Aberdeen's pressure pays off. It was Peter Weir who caused all the problems initially getting the ball in. A headed clearance from Dave McPherson returned straight to him. He managed again to drive one across goal and there was Frank McDougall going into the near post in front of Dickie Walker to head home his 16th goal this season. Oh, it's a delightful ball from Eric Black. Simpson breaking on the left. McDougall is through the middle calling for the ball now. Here's McDougall. And there's Aberdeen's second. The ball played forward initially. It was Eric Black who set up with that delightful head flick into the path of Neil Simpson. Frank McDougall was screaming for the ball through the middle and Simpson held things up then delivered a perfect cross for McDougall's flashing header. Now we are. Girls think fast. Players with great ease, Peter Weir, this afternoon. Now with Tom McQueen. Good pass to Black. The perfect finish. 3 0 to Aberdeen. We are starting to move earlier on, making progress on the left. Then McQueen became involved, forced the ball through with that stabbed pass to Black. A good piece of control, a deadly finish, and that's 3 0 to Aberdeen. Fitz has done very well indeed today for Rangers. Been a very busy player, involved all the time. But still has been unable to prevent Aberdeen taking full control of the play. Derek Joss is header there, Simpson! Tapped in by McDougall, and the flag has gone up on the far side. It went up rather late, and referee David Syme has waved the flag down and insisted that the goal be given. Set up by the corner kick on the left. Derek Johnston might have invented to leave that ball. He chose to head it back towards the edge of the box. Simpson came on to have a full body shot at goal, didn't catch it well. And Frank McDougall, that ace of chance takers inside the box, knocked it home to make it 4-0. Short one to Pritz, the deflection and the ball's in the net. Rangers have pulled one back. Mitchell to Hewitt. Eric Black calling for it in the air in the box. Spin carrying the ball through to Weir. Penalty kick's been given. Patterson impeded Peter Weir. And referee Sion once again, very close to the action, gives the penalty kick. And if you walk on the line, facing Tommy McQueen. 5-1 to Aberdeen. Tommy McQueen makes it a day of complete joy for the Aberdeen fans. And he couldn't have taken that penalty kick with more confidence and assurance. McGeeky's header, there's Harvey. And it run to McKimmy. Well, good play from Black, going to touch away from Smith. Still Eric Black, the chance for Aberdeen. Needs an accurate finish, and it's provided by Black. Well, a solo goal to remember by Black. And Aberdeen take the lead just three minutes from half time. Hewitt plays it inside for Angus. Cowan with a layoff. Here's McQueen. Looking for Black through the middle. The dummy releases Cowan. Now the chance for Stark. Well, that's brilliant play from Aberdeen. That's the play you would expect from champions. And now Hewitt. He's found Stark in the box. And that's the third. Billy Stark does it again. What a remarkable goal scorer. Everything now appears to be going Aberdeen's way. Cowan has found space. Looking for Black in the middle. Back it goes for Simpson. Goal number four. And once again, brilliantly conceived. Cowan's corner. There's McLeish. Shoot it. 
1-0 to Aberdeen. Cohen helping Blank in attack. Here's Dougie Bell. Blank in nipping the ball away, but it breaks for Hewitt. Brilliant goal from Hewitt. There's Bannon. Nice touch. Brought down by McKimmy. The penalty's been given. And United have the perfect opportunity to get back into the match. Leighton on the line. Here's Bannon. Well, with the rebound, Bannon makes it 2-1. And no luck at all for Jim Leighton. And in by Hewitt towards Black. This start. The aerial power pays off again for Aberdeen. Bell has Black free on the right. A good cross. Cowan. Four one to Aberdeen. And no luck at all for Billy Thompson. And it's not swinging this time. Golf is there. There's Hegate. O'Reilly. That's a second for United. By late April 1985, a draw at Pitodri against nearest challengers Celtic would virtually guarantee the Dons a third league title under Alex Ferguson. But there was a setback. And a penalty kick's been given. Now oh, what an opportunity this is for Celtic. Roy Aiken has scored the last two Celtic penalty kicks. So he has been entrusted with the task once again. Aiken, brilliantly struck, and Celtic are ahead. Fortius with the free kick. There's Willie Miller. The equaliser for Aberdeen. And how Miller enjoyed it. And there goes the final whistle. The Aberdeen supporters greet their favourites. Malik Ferguson comes out of the dugout looking very happy indeed. Uh, Alec Ferguson undoubtedly demonstrating that he clearly believes the league is well and truly won, notwithstanding mathematical considerations. So a tremendous performance from Aberdeen to come back after trilling from Roy Aiken's penalty goal five minutes from half-time. And then it was their captain, Willie Miller, who gave an inspired defensive performance and who eventually had the equalising goal which guarantees the league championship for Aberdeen for the second time in succession and the third time in six years. With the championship retained by Aberdeen, the following match at Tynecastle turned into an exhibition. Green wins it from Robertson. It's Porteous. Now McDougall. It's there. It's Frank McDougall opens the scoring. Fish. Linking in midfield. Stewart to Bell. Aberdeen looking very polished as Simpson goes forward. And there's Frank McDougall. And Aberdeen second. Start again. Now Bell. Portiers through the middle. There's McDougall. Absolutely magnificent. Turning in to a total jamboree for Aberdeen well you just can't expect to see goals any better than that a flamboyant end to a flamboyant campaign with the best attack and defence in the country creating a record gap between goals scored and goals conceded but one trophy was still eluding Alex Ferguson I didn't have any main aims at all other than that and I think I probably said that in the very early days when we, we were going into the League Cup comp campaign. I says the League Cup is not important. The League's important. And funny thing, by saying that, you wonder if I put a drink to myself because it wasn't until my last season that mm -hmm. I finally won the League Cup, you know? Because we kept getting to semi finals and finals and getting knocked out. And I was beginning to say, think to myself, well, I wish the heck I hadn't said that. But in October 1985, Aberdeen had the chance to take the trophy, having eliminated Ayr United, St Johnston, Hearts and Dundee United on the road to Hamden. The chase is on for McDougall. 
has Hewitt right behind. Oh, it's a great play from Hewitt. Hewitt's going to kick. Over away by Brazil, straight back to Hewitt. Billy Stark! 2-0 to Aberdeen. There's Simpson. Very yes. black. two early goals, I think it was in the first 20 minutes, it was 2-0 up and then we just seemed to control the game after that uh, but I mean it was special as well, it was the first time Aberdeen won the League Cup for a while and it was my first League Cup uh, winner's medal so it was good. And in May Ferguson had the chance of his first domestic cup double after beating Montrose, Arbroath, Dundee and Hibs on the way to a Hamden Scottish Cup final against Hearts. Miss Hewitt. An explosive start to the season for Aberdeen before injury. But the other committees, there's Hewitt again, making room for the shot. John Hewitt, 1 0 to Aberdeen. They've been on the attack until Hewitt picked up this long clearance from the Aberdeen half, cut inside Levine, made room for the shot. Went it beyond Henry Smith, right into the corner. And Billy Stark, in fact, is warming up on the track below us as Aberdeen try to get forward again. Here's Peter Weir. Kid not quite so close to him this time. Weir testing Kid's pace. The great chance! John Hewitt! And the vital start to the second half provided by Aberdeen. Three minutes into the second half, some magic from Peter Weir racing towards the byline, getting away from Walter Kidd, pulling the ball back. Now look at this dummy in the first instance, and there was Hewitt with the goal at his mercy. And this free kick again poses danger for the Hearts defence. Played across by Weir. John Hewitt lifting Aberdeen's fourth Scottish Cup in just five years. It was to be the last of ten major trophies won by Alex Ferguson in only six years, as he was to accept an irresistible offer to manage Manchester United. I always remember a story not long after he came here. You know, he went to the, the chairman and asked him for some money, you know, to buy a good player. And uh, the chairman said to him, look, Alex, this club can't afford to give you money. He says, I'll tell you what to do. He says, you go out. He says, and work with the players that you've got. He says, you've got 36 professional players in your staff. He says, surely you can get a team out of that. He says, you go out and work and do what you're good at. He says, and you'll get players. And Fergie did, did that, knew he wasn't going to get the money. He did that, and with the result, we got players like Simpson, Cooper, Hewitt, Black, all come into the team. And uh, Fergie proved then how good a manager he was. Alex took over and really proved himself as one of the, the, the best managers that Scotland's ever produced. I think he was great for this club because he came in at a time when there was a lot of youngsters and he, he taught them good habits and uh, they, they learned a lot and they stuck to these habits uh, as they got older. Ferguson, as I'm saying, with that age, he actually ran a bit of, there's a bit of fear in it as well, as I say, with youngsters, but we thought, well, I better do it for this man or we could be in trouble. And... Uh, but his, his tactical awareness was, was brilliant. To me then, as a young man, I was astounded what he could see in a team. I'd go and watch a game and beside him in ten minutes he'd pick out the flaws and everything else. And I was uh, astonished at that. He was magnificent picking out flaws in other teams and uh, 
he knew how to weak it, work out the weaknesses. And uh, but his training was good. It was revolutionary as well. His, his training was excellent. I was depressed when uh, Alex Ferguson left the club, but uh, I wasn't despondent. I thought that uh, the club could come back again, and with the players that we had here and the experience that we had, uh, we're sure that we get back to the top. Willie Miller's faith was well founded after two narrow Skull Cup final defeats by Rangers. The 1989 final was to be Aberdeen's. This corner, lofting it in. The header from Mason. Aberdeen are ahead. A ball breaking off the wall. A delightful ball in there from Connor. Mason getting up there with Monroe. Woods was caught in no man's land. And that's what has given Aberdeen the lead. Paul Mason's seventh goal of the season. Woods came and stopped. Left himself stranded, and Mason took full advantage. Now Walters, Ferguson has continued the run. McCoyce also is up. And Grant has done a good job so far on Walters, slowing down his progress. And well, now back to Wilkins, and Aberdeen now have the one back to face the ball. Walters will cross. McCoyce backing into Willie Miller. The referee has given a penalty kick. Well, that is quite remarkable. Quite remarkable. Let's see this again. The ball chipped in. Now watch McCoy backing in all the way to Willie Miller. Miller trying to play the ball, being pushed back all the time. Down goes McCoy, and the referee sees that as a penalty kick. The referee insisting that all players stay out of the box. Here goes Walters against others. Rangers are back in level terms. Here's Johnston, then it goes to Stephen. And a great save from Stelders. Brilliant build-up play from Rangers, and Phil Stelders brings off perhaps the best save of the match so far. Walters puts it across, Johnston pushes it down for Stephen, and a great diving save from Stelders. Ferguson's power many times before, he's going to have another goal, the wall will have to be brave. Wow, what a tremendous let off for Aberdeen, Stelders couldn't hold it, the shot was so powerful. Well that shows the power in the save, Van der Ark doing well in defence, and balls in the box again, Van der Ark defending. Ferguson forward, there's what Johnston! Here's Wilkins, and with Robertson out of position, Johnston goes right into that gap. Stephen is there. There's Trevor Stephen with a great chance from McCall. Brilliant move from Ranger, the dummy from McCoy, set up in McCall, but it's Snelders who saves the day for Aberdeen. Now ball played in by Betts, up goes McLeish, Van der Ark's there, there's Nicholas, trying to turn. Van der Ark, and it's punched away by Woods. Fine goalkeeping there by Chris Woods. Charlie Nicholas can scarcely believe it. So just two minutes remaining in the first period of extra time as David Robertson launches the long throw into the box. Van der Ark got a touch, there's Nicholas. It's back to Mason! 2-1 to Aberdeen. Jockey start on the track. And the long throw did all the damage. David Robertson launching that ball and Van der Ark gets a vital touch on. Nicholas tees it up there for Mason and he drills home the goal which puts Aberdeen ahead. Great head flick on, great play here from Nicholas. Mason hovering, drilling the ball past Woods who had no chance at all. Look ahead, it must be painful for golf at the moment. And Trevor Stephen trying to find room for a cross. David Robertson trying to deny that. Forces it back to Gary Stevens. Ian Ferguson to McCoist. Fine effort, well saved by Snelders. Gets in trouble. Here's J Mo Johnston. Thought about a shot. And they like to be used Wilkins on the right. Here's McCoist. And Snelders pulls off the save of the match. And they're up with Goff. Nicholas goes in behind. Good control. May try this himself. Back it goes again to Mason. 
Down to Van der Ark. And a fine save from Woods. Well, Chris Woods emulating Theo Snelders at the other end. Tali Nicholas here looking up, setting things up for Paul Mason. Now, I think this wasn't quite what Mason intended, but he made it into a good move eventually with a header on. Van der Ark with a shot well saved by Woods. Up goes Butcher. There's Johnston, he couldn't get a touch. And there goes the final whistle. There's Theo Stelders. Rangers will lose the last part of extra time. It's Aberdeen the winners by two goals to one. Yeah, it was a great feeling. Yeah, also, I never won a major trophy, so yeah, I couldn't believe myself that I won something. You had a particularly outstanding game. Yes, I had an, uh, too busy uh, during the 90 minutes, but in extra time uh, we were 2-1 two, two up and then yeah, they wanted to make pressure on our goal. Well, I think it would have been a tragedy if we didn't get something out of that cup final this time around, third time around, because I felt we were unlucky in, in the previous two finals and, OK, people talk about low averages, but I think uh, I really felt that it was our turn this time and yeah, it proved to be the case. But it was nice, it was extra special for me. I can appreciate now how those players felt when we won the first championship. Having not won anything for a couple of years, the, the Skull Cup meant a, a hell of a deal to me. It was a very significant result, but I think it was more important for the, for the players themselves, for your, your individuals in the club, your McKimmies, and McLeishes, and Millers, who had been used to winning things and then it stopped. And then they had went through these two cup finals with a bit of disappointment of losing them, both at very late stages. And I've never known them to be as determined as they were going into that third game, so it meant more to them. It's just the same as it meant maybe more to supporters who have followed the, the club from they were born, really. It was only fitting that Aberdeen, having lifted the first trophy of the 1980s, should claim the last. Four Scottish Cups, three league titles, two Skull League Cups, and the European Cup Winners' Cup and the Super Cup. Eleven major trophies in ten years, a trawl that made Aberdeen Team of the Decade. And even now, they can go about with their chest up, you know, so far as football is concerned. And Aberdeen is a name that can be talked about in other parts of the world. There was no fear whatsoever, no apprehension whatsoever. And even young players coming in the team, and if you think of the Gothenburg team and the number of young players that played in such a big stage as that, uh, and you knew you were really confident about how they were going to do. We were good to watch. We were very professional. And I think um, we all enjoyed it. And we brought a lot of focus attention on Aberdeen at the town itself. A lot of good young players coming through again and hopefully another 11 trophies for the 1990s. <laughs> The man that's done most, I think, for this club has been our chairman, Mr. Donald. I think he's been the man behind this. You always know that he's the figurehead here. He's always here. And every manager that's been here and managers that's left here, every one of them is a, a kind word for Mr. Donald. <laughs>